A lot of news coming out of Macomb County recently and tonight in the upfront segment, Mark Hackle, the Macomb County Executive, joins me to touch on uh, some of the big topics. Mark, good evening. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. You bet, Dave. Let's, let's start with the latest in the case against uh, former county prosecutor Eric Smith. He was arraigned today after pleading guilty to federal charges of obstruction of justice. You, you sounded the alarm on Smith. What was it that tipped you off that things weren't right in his office? Well, there was no question. I mean, the audits that came back talking about some of the uh, funds that weren't on the books. Uh, we tried to get uh, you know, his attention to put that on the books. And, uh, you know, there was uh, not a lot of cooperation there. And so when we started uh, FOIAing the information and the documents, uh, there was a little bit of pushback. And uh, when we were able to obtain those and we started combing through them, we come to realize, you know, some of that money being spent uh, was very, very questionable expenditures. So knowing that, uh, you know, we had one decision to make and that was pass the information along and you know, come to find out there was more going on than just the issue dealing with uh, some of the forfeiture funds. So very unfortunate. Uh, but I think there were a lot of people that were tied into this. And, uh, you know, as the uh, federal agencies and, uh, you know, Matthew Snyder and his folks and uh, even Dana Nussel uh, got into it. Uh, they were able to find more of a concern uh, than what we originally had anticipated. Now, there's an interim prosecutor in place now. In your view, how is that office performing? You know, Jeannie Cloud is uh, trying to, you know, navigate through this and calm the waters, and she's done a great job. they got some great prosecutors here in Macomb County. We've got a great bench. You know, with that being said, I think there's a lot of support she's getting, you know, not just from our uh, Human Resources Department, our Corporation Council, and guiding her through this and the technical issues, uh, even some of the legal issues. Uh, but she's done a great job. You know, she's a great, great trial attorney. So it was the right move the judges made to appoint her there in the interim uh, as this uh, election plays out. And we'll see who the new prosecutor is come November. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, she's done a great job. But again, there's still more issues and, uh, you know, some others keep cropping up and she's just going to have to continue to deal with that. She's doing a good job. All right, let's uh, talk about COVID-19. You have the sewer testing project in the county to detect the presence of the virus. State is on board now with additional funding. Why is this important during the pandemic? You know, it was a unique opportunity. You know, Candace Miller, the public works commissioner here, her and I got great working relationship and have from day one when she first took office. And so her job is to figure out how do we clean up our waters. But then knowing this COVID crisis was here, we had some dollars that came our way, fortunately, uh, from our, our federal representatives, uh, you know, $152.5 million. Part of that was to try to figure out how do we do testing? And it wasn't just testing with people. She came up with this thought or concept, you know, there's some technology out there that can test certain areas. And so we're doing a little trial basis, uh, see if we can't test the sewage, you know, as unique as it sounds or kind of strange as it sounds. Uh, there's an opportunity to find out, you know, is there something in the sewage that can help us detect something from a community spread in an area? And then maybe get our health department to start doing more uh, testing in and around that community. So we're giving it a try. Uh, you know, it was money that was given to us by the federal government and we're getting some state support on that now. And uh, it's not money wasted, uh, you know, for us to test this wastewater, uh, but it might be something uh, that might be unique for the future if there are other issues that uh, come our way. Sure. All right. You're a Democrat. Governor Whitmer's a Democrat. Yet you've been critical of her use of executive powers throughout this pandemic and you supported the petition drive to repeal that law. Um, is this just principle? Is this a fight to protect businesses in your county? Um, what is it? Interesting question, Dave. I mean, from the onset, my question has always been with the data science, numbers, statistics, whatever it is, uh, what is it specific that allows these businesses to open? And we're not getting the answer. I mean, let's just be honest about that. Nobody's been able to do that. And so with that, it becomes arbitrary. And uh, that's difficult for businesses here in Macomb County and throughout the state to not know what the real information is. And when you keep asking, it's uh, based on the numbers, data science and the experts. So, you know, for me, that's not good enough. I need to know specifically. I'll just use an example. Right now, we open up the gyms. What was it that uh, statistically data number science that made her make that decision and not getting the answer is somewhat challenging and problematic. And I'm one of the people that likes to continue to ask questions, even if I'm not getting the answer. So the idea about what we're doing with this, you know, uh, unlock Michigan, it wasn't too much to support the initiative, but it's one of those. How do we unlock the legislature? And the simplest way of putting that is there isn't a legislative body that isn't working with their executive branch throughout the entire state, whether it's counties working with their county boards, uh, whether it's the uh, mayors or supervisors working with their township uh, you know, officials or even our city councils, out even at the localist of levels. What we did with our school children is allowed school boards at the localist of levels for legislatures to make a decision, very critical decision on what we're going to do with kids and putting them in a school. Extremely confusing all across the board, but yet that legislative body is working with the superintendent. So my question is, 
you know, knowing that's still a state of concern, uh, the issue of state of emergency, if it was still there, we wouldn't be opening up all these businesses, wouldn't have got rid of the state home orders. And uh, so with it, it's not a fight. It's just, you know, what's right. And this is the, to me, this is a constitutional issue. All three branches need to be working together. I'm from the executive branch. We have our clashes. We have our differences. But it's what the people expected. And right now, I think state legislatures, whether it's our, our representatives or our senators, need to be involved in these decisions making forward, especially if we're making laws that impact people's lives and their livelihoods. All right, last question. The election's 46 days away. Is Macomb County in a good place as far as counting the vote and making sure that vote is accurate? Yeah, no question. The clerks across this county have always done a great job. I mean, they're very reputable. Uh, we've not seen any concerns. And even our current clerk, you know, Fred Miller, has done a great job of, you know, making sure, especially during voting processes, uh, that he's out there getting people to register, as well as making sure that they're maintaining the integrity uh, of the actual process here in Macomb County. So I'm confident we're going to have a, a good turnout, and uh, it's not going to be anything that's going to be nefarious or any questions or concerns whatsoever. All right, excellent. We'll leave it there tonight. Mark, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. You bet. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Linda. All right, Mark, good to see you.